Hello. In this video, we are going to talk about formal charges, particularly the formal charges on atoms of ligands in transition metal complexes. On the slide, we have the definition of how to calculate the formal charge. The formal charge is equal to the number of valence electrons, V, plus the number of lone pair electrons, L, and then half of the bonding electrons. We can think of this informally as that we are giving up, we're dividing the number of bonding electrons equally between both of the atoms that share them. Recall that in the lewis langmuir theory, electrons can either be held by just one atom, in which case they are lone pair electrons, or they are shared between two atoms, in which case they are bonding electrons. One of the reasons for calculating formal charges is that we assume for a stable compound that the formal charges on each atom will be zero, and if they are not, the negative formal charges will be on the most electronegative element. To highlight the difference between the formal charge and the oxidation number, we show examples that are color-coded for carbon monoxide. The lewis dot structure is exactly the same, and we show in each scheme the electrons that are counted for carbon as gray and those that are counted towards oxygen as red. We see in the case of the formal charges, the six bonding electrons are divvied up halves and halves three to each one, whereas an oxidation number, all the electrons are counted to the more electronegative element. So it's important that to have the idea of an oxidation number, we need some scale of electronegativity, which is something we don't need when we're talking about formal charges. Here we have carbon monoxide, and there are a total of 10 valence electrons because there's four from carbon, six from oxygen, and the bonding electrons are allocated three to each to carbon and oxygen. So somewhat surprisingly, we end up with a formal charge of minus one on carbon and a formal charge of plus one on oxygen. And this seems suspicious because we had just mentioned that we imagine for stable compounds that the negative formal charges will be on the most electronegative elements. Now, it turns out carbon monoxide is a stable molecule, and it does, in reality, have an experimentally determinable uh, slight negative partial charge on the carbon rather than on oxygen. Now, here we have carbon monoxide bonding through a dative bond, a coordinate covalent bond, to the metal. And in the process, we see as far as formal charges go, we've reduced the metal from a formal charge of zero to a formal charge of minus one. Carbon is now neutral, and oxygen still has a positive one formal charge. In the previous slide, we had a coordinate covalent bond between carbon and metal. It's a sigma bond. And then with the buildup of electron density on the metal, the metal will try to push some of that density into a pi antibonding orbital on carbon monoxide. And that leads to this formal double bond that we see between the metal and carbon here. So now the metal, carbon, and oxygen all have formal charges of zero. Our next ligand is NO nitric oxide, which has five valence electrons for nitrogen, six for oxygen. So we have a total of 11 electrons, an odd number. So we notice that uh, nitric oxide is a free radical, even though a particularly stable one. And for formal purposes, we're setting our metal to have one valence electron. In this particular scheme, the metal and each of the atoms of nitric oxide has a formal charge of zero. And we can see color-coded how we've allocated the 
shared electrons between nitrogen and oxygen in such a way that each atom gets exactly two electrons. Nitric oxide is similar to carbon monoxide, but whereas carbon monoxide is a two electron donor, nitric oxide, oxide is a three electron donor. So in this particular bonding mode, we can imagine first that the odd nitrogen electron is donated to the metal, and then the nitrogen donates a lone pair to form a sigma coordinate covalent bond to the metal. Because of this, first donation of the odd electron, we can think of nitric oxide in this form as being formally uh, NO plus. So this is the NO plus binding mode of nitric oxide. The metal is most reduced. It has now a formal charge of minus two. Nitrogen is plus one and oxygen is plus one. Next, we know that metals don't like to have a buildup of electron density because they're electropositive rather than electronegative. So the metal can backbond, it can backdonate a pair of electrons into a pi antibonding orbital on nitric oxide and becomes formally double bound to the nitrogen. Now the formal charge on the metal is reduced to minus one, nitrogen is plus one, and oxygen is zero. The metal can push even more electron density onto nitric oxide, now have pushing a, um, a lone pair into an sp2 hybridized orbital on nitrogen. And now we're going to get, at the nitrogen, a trigonal planar configuration. So we would notice that the NO ligand is bent. And because of this back donation of a further electron, we refer to this as the NO minus binding mode. Our final ligand is actually an entire class of ligands, the isocyanides. And we have CN and then an alkyl R group. Here we're shown the metal uh, in its native state as having two valence electrons. And we see the free isocyanide where the carbon, just like carbon monoxide, has a minus one charge. But now the nitrogen has a zero formal charge and the alkyl group must have a plus one charge. Recall that we know this has to be true because for any neutral compound, the sum of the formal charges must equal zero. And for any ion, the sum of the formal charges must be equal to the charge on the ion. Here, the isocyanide binds to the metal through a uh, donated lone pair, a dative or coordinate covalent bond that is sigma in nature. This leads to the formal charge of the metal now being minus one, carbon and nitrogen are at zero, and the formal charge on the alkyl group R is plus one. As we have seen before, metals don't like to have a buildup of electron density. So after the sigma donation from the ligand, they often will push electron density into a pi antibonding orbital on the ligand and thereby reduce their uh, electron density. Once this is done, we have a formal metal carbon double bond and the formal charges on the metal and carbon are now zero. The one on nitrogen is minus one and on the alkyl group R is going to be plus one. Finally, the metal can push even more electron density onto the carbon, now giving a lone pair on carbon in an sp2 hybridized orbital. It's the pair of gray electrons that we see 
sitting on top of the C. Um, so this will lead to a trigonal planar configuration, and we would see that this uh, isocyanide ligand is bent. And in the process, the metal now has a plus one uh, formal charge, which is sensible for a, a electropositive element. Carbon has a formal charge of minus one, nitrogen is minus one, and the alkyl group R has a formal charge of plus one. I thank you very much for your kind attention. Please stay safe out there, and as always, have a good one.